Hey there, I'm excited to announce this to you today. This is what you've been waiting for in your spiritual quest. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm finally ready to announce it that it's ready to go. It's the Grief to Growth Community Circle. Now, this is a sanctuary where like-minded souls are united in their journey through grief and towards personal transformation. It's more than just a place. It's a beginning. It's a commitment to growth and understanding. Here you're finding not just a community, but you're entering a circle of trust and depth. You're going to engage with interactive coursework. You'll dive into exclusive podcast episodes and partake in discussions that illuminate the path from mourning to empowerment. This is a realm where every question is honored and every individual's journey is validated. To be part of this exclusive circle, visit us at grieftogrowth.com slash community or look for the chat icon at the bottom of every page on the main website. Remember that entry is a privilege because I want to ensure that every member is as dedicated and genuine as you are. You must apply to join, but the journey within is worth every step. So go ahead and join us today. Check it out, grieftogrowth.com slash community, and I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, welcome to Back to Grief to Growth, another episode. Uh, my name is Brian Smith, and I'm the host of Grief to Growth, of course. And we talk about the deep mysteries of life, death, and the connections that transcend the physical realm. Um, today, we're going to talk with Mary Beth Decker. She's an intuitive, she's an animal, an intuitive animal communicator, I should say. She's a medical intuitive, and she's an energy healer. She's not just a voice for our pet. She's a bridge between human understanding and animal consciousness. Uh, she's at sacredgrove.com, and she helps pet guardians face challenging issues with their animals, including using her intuitive and healing skills to address physical, emotional, and behavioral concerns. In today's episodes, we're going to go into the mysteries of animal communication, and, and Mary Beth hopefully will demystify that for us, showing it's not just a special gift for a few people, but that we can all do it. Uh, we'll, do, we'll delve into how and why people learn from this type of communication, and we're going to cover the basics, help you get started on your journey. We'll explore the topics of our animals' senior years. How do we make peace with their passing? Uh, we'll talk about the, the the myths that might surround that, and we'll talk about how to deepen the bonds with our animal connections and why, what might be holding us back and what can help to strengthen that. So whether you're a pet parent or an animal lover or just intrigued by the deeper connections in life, I hope this episode provides provides with you a heartwarming and enlightening journey. So stay tuned as we explore these themes with Mary Beth Decker. So with that, I want to welcome Mary Beth to Grief to Growth. It's great to be here. And we're we're getting to have my cat Bunny visiting too with us today. So thank you. Oh, I I love it when animal companions join in on the on the podcast. It's funny because sometimes people ask me, should I put my dog in the other room? I know cats sometimes you can't put them in the other room because they won't stay. <laughs> That's true. She she was she was crying. She was outside just saying, Wait a second. I know what you're doing. Let me in. I want to. Yeah. Do so do you, I just, just as kind of off the cuff, but do you think that they know sometimes what's going on when we do stuff like this? Cause I do see dogs and cats. They want to join in. I, I think they do. I've noticed that uh, in, even in my sessions, especially when it's about them, when we're talking about them, that many of them will come on over to say, oh, let me, let me be part of this. Um, and I got to say, there's probably, and you probably have it, there's a certain energy that they're attracted to. And Brian, that might be why people, their people's dogs and cats and birds, whatever, want to come in because there's something that you're creating that is like, yeah, I'd like to get a little more of this, a little closer to this. So I think it's almost um, an accolade to you to say when, when they want to come in and hang out with you during these. That's that's yeah, interesting. Thanks. Yeah. So, how did you discover your ability to communicate with animals? How did this come about? Well, my my dogs literally started communicating with me uh, after I had um, two full careers, and I got this urge to uh, go in a completely different direction into massage, and then from there, I, I learned energy healing and. During my energy healing training, um, my dogs showed up and and started communicating with me. And what was most interesting is the two that showed up first had passed on. They were in the spirit realm. Hmm. And um, my first dog 
that came in was Timmy, and he was he's a great dog. He he was a street dog from Hawaii, and um, we picked him up when we were stationed there. And, and he was he he traveled just like a Navy dependent should. He's he'd been all over the place, hmm. and uh, but he passed away here in Virginia, and he was sitting in in the dining room. And now he's passed away, right? But it looked like my dog, Timmy, full full guy, can't see through him. He's sitting there one, I would say one ear up and one ear down, big grin. And he's looking at me and I, I, I'm catching him out of the corner of my eye mm-hmm. as I'm doing dinner. And I turn and I go, Timmy, and he, and he leaves, he's gone. But it was real. I got to tell you, it was real. And and clearly, the communication was not like, let me tell you my life story. But it was, Mom, I'm still around. I survived death. I'm happy, and I wanted. I just wanted you to know. Mm. <laughs> I love you. I love you still. Uh, and so that he was the start of my saying, what the heck? And I had some others. Let's see. It was really fun. My dog, Eddie, who had also passed, she accompanied me. Now she's passed, so it's nobody can, can sense her except me. She mm-hmm. accompanied me on a plane because I was going to a an annual meeting where I was going to staff it. And you know, if you've gone to anything, well, if you're staff, you got to be happy. Mm-hmm. You got to be smiling. And I, I'm in I'm in total grief because I we just let her go. Mm-hmm. And so she was sitting in the aisle next to me. I I didn't see her. I felt her presence so strongly that I was petting her. And, and I always laugh and I think, I wonder what the people on the plane were thinking, you know? Mm. And like, who is this woman? She there's nothing there, and she's moving her hand like this, as if she's petting a dog, because that's mm. what I was doing. And she stayed with me um, and came and stayed with me that first night when I didn't have to actually go do anything and let me just experience my sadness and feeling her loving me anyway, comforting me so that I was able to get up and do what I needed to do for the rest of the meeting. And it was just awesome. Mm. And it was quite a gift, right? So um, then we had, well, we'll keep going. Then we have Mitsubishi. (laughs) And he he was a Siberian Husky, and he knew Eddie. Now he's still alive, right? Mm-hmm. I got to be clear on this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have right? to differentiate. They're, yeah, they're, well, yeah. they're either physical or or in spirit. It's like, oh, I because yeah, they're all alive. They're all alive. There you go. Thank you. He's physical. His big old furry self is sitting with me on the couch, and I'm doing some I'm I'm doing some energy healing for him. Now I have not this. Declared I'm an animal communicator. Because his back end is getting stiff and things like that. And he looks at me. And in my mind, I hear, don't try that. Don't do that shit on me. And he he says, it killed Eddie. And I'm like, hmm. what? First, I thought, well, if. I was really hearing him. This is what he would say. But reality was, I heard the guy. Hmm. And he jumped off the couch like he was offended. Um, And after I got over the, damn, my dog just swore at me. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought about it and thought, well, I was doing energy healing for Eddie. She still passed away. Did it make a difference? And I thought, yeah, it did. She's she was in a good place. She showed it to me when she she got on the plane with me, or she was really there, fully present. 
And so when I got better at uh, communicating, I went back and said, no, no Mitsubishi. I know I couldn't keep her in her physical body, mm -hmm. but I did help her transition to make it easier, to mm -hmm. just smooth it out. And then he let me do energy healing on him after that. Mm -hmm. So finally, we come to my dog, Tibor, who we got after Mitsu died. And that was a guy that really pushed me into moving into animal communication. Hmm. He had come from a pretty tough background, and I was picking some of that up. He also had physical scars for such a young dog. Uh, you knew that it was clear, and his behaviors made it very clear that there were some issues in his life. But when I sat on the couch with him two times I saw the same vision of this training that they do for dogs uh, guard dogs where the guys put on these big thick suits and the dogs attack them and they grab and do all that stuff and I'm like what the heck you must have seen this because I've seen it I, it came into my head twice and I know nothing about that stuff so it's not like I can I think about it on a regular basis. And I said, I finally said to my friend, Mary, I, I don't know what's going on. I keep getting these visions. And she says, Mary Beth, that's animal communication. I'm like, mm. that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after that, we I used both my energy healing and animal communication with him. It helped a big deal. And I also started working with people and their animals after getting some good training. So that's how that's how I became an animal communicator. It certainly wasn't like I was um, born with it, at least not in my understanding mm -hmm. as a kid. So where do you go for training to be an animal communic communicator? Well, uh, there's a, there's a lot of good people out there that train, and uh -huh. uh, I. I do a, I, I've created Uconnect, uh, my own training for people. It's specifically designed to start connecting with your own animals in case, whether you want to be a professional communicator or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm one of many and there's some great, there, there are some great folks out there that do this. And um, it's lovely when you start making those connections and you can hear and you can, you can also send information and uh it just it adds such beautiful quality to our relationship with our animals mm -hmm. so what's animal communication like for you do you do you hear words in english or do you get images you, you've kind of touched on it a little bit but just give me some more detail as how's that how that works for you okay um i i have my own definition of I think we'd say telepathy, uh, the, the intuitive connection, because I think it, for me, the way it is, is information, energy, vibrations are coming into the mind and the brain. I mean, there already, already does that. We we get stuff coming into our ears, but it actually goes into the brain and the brain's the stuff that says, ah, Mary Beth's talking. Same thing with the eyesight. It goes to the brain. I think that information comes in that way. So having said that, uh, I get knowings. Like I just know. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard things in English. I have uh, visualized things. And it's it's not like I'm watching a movie. But in my mind's eye, I'm kind of going like this into my head. But sometimes for people, it's a little in front of them. A, a picture shows up. Um, also feel things in my body. Uh, that's where the many different things like medical intuition come in. But you can, I can also feel like if somebody's anxious, I can ask them how, how it feels and I can feel what it's like in the body. Mm -hmm. um, so... 
smell doesn't come in too often, but these are the other ones uh, come in pretty regularly, all these different ways, Brian. Yeah, yeah, and mediumship they call those the clairs, the different yeah, exactly. Clairs. So, um, and it sounds like I, you're also a medium as well as an animal communicator, at least with animals. Yeah, um, I, yeah, it's it's something that's uh, how do I say it? I know some mediums who are very, very good. I'm not sure I'm at that level, but I certainly can communicate with those who've passed because the truth is their their energy is still there to be communicated with. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you're in a physical body or not, there's 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 somebody out there to communicate with. But just have to uh, learn the con- how to connect and feel that connection with them. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey there, something I want to tell you about today. My podcast platform, Buzzsprout, has recently made it easier for me to allow you to support me financially. Go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash subscribe. That's grief, the number two, growth.com slash subscribe. And once you're there, you can sign up to support me financially. Now you can do it for as little as $3 a month or of course, as much as you'd like. If you do that, you'll get access to bonus episodes and you'll see those in the regular feed. They'll have a lock on them. But when you become a subscriber, you'll actually get access to your own private feed and you'll be able to listen to the regular podcast along with the bonus podcast for the subscribers. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for sharing the podcast. I want to thank those of you who support me financially. Have a great day and on to the episode. Yeah, and, and I was going to ask you about how we can learn to connect with our own animals. Um, but, you know, the, the thing is, I think anybody that's ever had an animal, and, I, and I, I'm a dog person. We are talking before we started recording. I've had dogs for the last 30-some years, and they communicate with us in, in a different language, in a different way, and they pick up on a lot more than we realize. Oh, that's so true. I I, I felt for forever that our animals are already intuitive. They're already picking all that stuff up and they're wondering why the heck we are able to, <laughs> you know, get what they're sending in. And why isn't it a two way street? Uh, um, so this, this little girl one time, uh, I could not go to sleep. Anybody said he probably had it. You go to bed and your mind will just not shut up. It just keeps roving and roving, roving. She came over and she slept on my tummy. And all of a sudden, I realized the next day I had just gone to sleep. She just like, like, you got a problem there, mom. I can say that, Mary Beth. Let me, let me see if I can just clear that stuff out for Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And there's a lot of stories of animals who understand when we're, we're upset or we're grieving and they're there for us. Um, they also pick up on on our anxiety. Uh, I think that uh, it is definitely a two way street that our our own emotions will affect our animals. And and even the energy of things that we're thinking about doing, even before we get the suitcase out, I think they probably p- start to pick up the like. Hey, they're getting ready to go somewhere or what's, you know, what's going on, things like that. They pick you know, up it's, it's funny that you said that because um, we were going to try, we were traveling last weekend to go to my parents' house in Columbus. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've all had that experience when you get the suitcase out. Right. So again, the rational mind says, oh, they know because I've got the suitcase out. And when I got the suitcase out before I left, so they put that together that I'm, that I'm traveling and then they act all weird. Well, we were leaving that morning and we were, we were driving and we weren't, it wasn't an overnight trip. So we weren't packing. And my dog has never driven to Columbus with us. It's a two hour drive from us, but she's never been with us, but we were taking her that day. And, but as far as our actions go, nothing was different. It was just a normal morning, but she was acting weird all morning. She was just falling right behind me, like right on my legs. And I'm like, how does she know what's going on? Because I haven't done anything out of the ordinary. There you go. Perfect example, Brian. There's just, they're connected and and, um, who knows, they may even, I think we visualize as much as we 
speak and sure. visualizations are really good. So you're probably thinking about where you're going, where's the car going to go, uh, what time should you get there, you know, mm -hmm. what do you need to put? I think they're picking all that up. And obviously, you just gave me a perfect example of that. Yeah, I guess it was really wild because, and I, and I now I wonder, like, does she know that she was going? Because again, she normally doesn't go in the car. She goes in the car to the vet. We don't we we don't take her places. Yeah. Um, but she was she was acting really weird that day, and so I think we all had that experience. So when when people ask you how do we communicate with our animals, I think it's, uh, and I'll let you answer. But how do you, how do you think we should better connect with our animals? Um. Let's see how I start with this. There's some things you can do in the physical world in addition to, you know, using telepathy, the clear, the different clears. Um, you, you can pay more attention to them in a mindful way. Um, and I'm I'm saying this based on what I've noticed in my life. Simple things like, I'll say it the way I, I understood it. We don't walk by them like they're a piece of furniture. We start acknowledging them at any time we can with a touch or a look or something like that. So that increases the bond between us. Um, and particularly, if you notice that they're looking for you, to you for some kind of a reciprocal, you love me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, just don't walk by, because I've noticed that sometimes with my cats and dogs, and I'll look back and they're like, she just walked by. So I go back and, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a long one, a couple seconds. Um, because we get so absorbed in our human life and our to dos and what the next thing we have to do is. Uh, we forget that there are beings. I don't know that we forget, but we we put them at a lower level of importance because we got to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like to move them back up there, and just uh, it's such a simple thing to do, especially again um, when they're, um, as I said, when they're really looking for you to give them something when. You, Maybe your dog or cat comes up and jumps and, and just looks at you. Um, or, they're, they're, you know, my cats will do that. And my dogs will do that also. My, little, my new Mally will come and go like this. My, my little dog just say, excuse me, excuse me. Could I have some time from you? And uh, the answer is generally, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the physical stuff. Um One more thing, which most of us could do a better job at, is if we're with them, particularly for walking dogs, it might be a good experience to, to um, disconnect from phones and anything else and just be there with your pup. Mm -hmm. uh, enjoying, it's good for us, but it's also good for the dogs. It's like, it's our time. I think if you think of little kids at some point where you just have to be you and them playing in the playground and you're not you're not doing this and doing that. You're actually with them doing that's another way to just increase the bond through physical stuff. All right. So intuitively, you could create just create a mind mindset that uh, one, they're already connecting with you. They, the stuff's coming in already, and they really want to. So they're ready. And then do a little bit of practice of just being quiet and asking a question. And when I say getting quiet is, is imagine you're just moving your thoughts and emotions out of the way. So I, I, I sometimes I would, I would actually take my mind and say, okay, 
here's here's a game. Go play solitaire over in the corner because I'm talking to my animals right now. I just need I need to be with them. Hmm. And then um, ask them to tell you or show you something. And sit quietly and see if anything comes through. Something probably will. And it'll be fleeting, but take it because the first piece you get comes in, slides in like your imagination before mm-hmm. your, your thoughts start to beat it down and say, I knew already knew that, or that's not possible. Or, and then thank them if you get anything and say, I'll take more. That, that's a beginning to start. Uh, I'll stop for a second because I want to talk about sending information too. But uh, if you have any thoughts on that, or, or I, I think that's I think that's great advice. And and it's interesting when we started the conversation, you, you talked about your first communication being like a, a mediumistic communication with an animal that was in spirit. And as I hear you talking, I, I've, I've worked with a lot of mediums, and it sounds like what mediums do. It's like getting my mind out of the way, getting open that that communication is being able to feel that energy. And, you know, and, and knowing that energy is already coming, it's like, it's like we need to encourage them because your dog's always looking at you, trying try to get you to understand what they're thinking. It, it is. I, I, I really do. I have this picture of them saying, my beloved human, what is wrong with you? I can't think this any louder, please. Where, yeah. why are you getting this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and so you start opening it. Uh, sometimes I think about it as, as, as if you're sitting in a, a a theater waiting for the movie or the play to begin and you're all quiet because you're just you're there open ready uh mm-hmm. that's one of my my ways of thinking about it but but people probably can come up with their own ways of how to just be quiet for a second and let it in yeah so that's receiving what about what about sending information to so our sending, animals? um sending for me is three three pieces again you've got to the preface is the mindset is you got to trust that you're going to send and they're going to receive it. Like just imagine or pretend or just say, I'm going to just try this. Who knows? Maybe it'll work. If I never do it, I'll never know. So just, just have an open mind about it. Then I like to do pictures, thoughts, and emotions. Pictures are really useful for our animals. Hmm. Um, I think they think in visuals a lot. So when you want to share something, if you can think of a, a visual that will give them an idea of what you're talking about, uh, then you then you say the words that you're going to say. And then if there's an emotion, that you can generate, I believe that that amps it up. Hmm. So, for example, um, when I when I work with uh, some, I do something called postcards from your pets, where I let dogs and mostly dogs and cats know that th- when their people are coming back and and tell them they they're definitely coming back. They love them. I just keep the love connection going. One of the things I do is show them how many sunrises until their people come back. Oh, wow. So we we actually start a countdown after a while. Like, so you picture I'm closing my eyes and I'm I'm seeing whoever I'm connecting with in my mind's eye. So yeah. And then I'm saying, hey. In case my dogs and cats are listening, this is just a test. <laughs> I'm just practicing, guys. Uh, your people would be back, and I show them the sun, like the day lightning, the sun coming up. And I go, I show one, two, three, and then I sh- I show on the day they come back is the uh, my picture of their people walking back through the door and everybody being so happy. Hmm. So you you got. I'm telling them. I'm showing them. And I've got, I actually send the emotion of joy when everybody gets reunited. Mm -hmm. 
I have more examples, uh, but I'm just stopping to see if anything comes up question-wise from you. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, I love that example because we we rarely leave our dog. When my wife and I both work from home, and when we take her to the kennel to stay, I always am concerned, like, and I'll tell her in words, you know, we're going to be back in three days or whatever, but I like that, being able to amplify that with the sunrise. Because I've even thought about, like, tell her it's going to be, you know, certain number of meals or you know, so the sunrise is is a, is a is a great way to do it. So yeah, thank you for that. I think that's that's really going to be helpful for people that you know we hate leaving our pets and they don't know. You know, no, I know, and um, and you can communicate while she's there to just continue to say, "I, hey, I'm coming back." I've I've actually done that. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually done that. We we had to go. We went to Arizona last year. And we were gone for like a week, and we're never gone for a week. And I'm like, you know, Stevie's going to be freaking out because usually it's a day or two. Um, so for seven days, every you know, every morning I get up, I'm like, okay, it's just you know, it's just this many more days. So I like that. Uh, that, but I like sending the picture too. I think that's really helpful and the emotion. The emotion makes it just, you know, so, so great. Um, we can, if we have time, we can even, I can give you a technique. We can practice a technique of connecting through the heart. If we have time, I, we can do that. Oh, well, sure. We have time. Um, yeah. Okay. What I want to do, for, one more thing. Let me see with this. All right. Excuse me for a second. Mm -hmm. So we go. The other important thing that I've learned is if you're going to use a visual or you're going to send them information, it has to make sense from their point of view. Mm. Okay. I'm going to give a couple examples. People, is, you know, I work with people and they have some rowdy pups generally. I, I have two. And they say, I want them to behave when people come to the house. I said, that doesn't mean anything to your dog. Behave. What the heck? So then I say, what do you want them to do? How do you want them to behave? Give me a picture. I'm um, like my my dog Stella who passed away. I and Tibor. I said, when they come in, I'd like you guys to go and just jump on the couch. Tibor's like, yeah, whatever. But Stella, and I would picture her, people coming in. I'm closing my eyes here. Mm -hmm. I picture people coming in. She's all excited. And she looks and she jumps on the couch. Tibor just stands her and just stands. But he, he knows, but he says no. What was so beautiful is that that is what she did. Mm -hmm. She would go, people would come in and she would jump on the couch. And then she would look at me and she would say, I did good, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, Stella, you're great. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Um, another one that was very cool was I was working with Lynn and her dog, Chef, and they would go to this um, house, their second house in Colorado with lots of land. And the dogs, she would tell Chef, she would say, don't go any farther than where I can see you. I've got to be able to see you. And he finally said, I don't know what you mean. He actually told her because she, she just took my class. Hmm. He said, well, okay, let's, let's turn it around. How about don't go any farther than you can't see the house or you can't hear me call for you. That's, and then he's like, oh, okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So you really got to think about what, it, not just the words, but like, what are the visuals that you're asking them mm -hmm. or you're telling them? Put it in a concrete way. It's very helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Very helpful. All right. So you're going to tell us about a technique to enhance okay. this. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is my energetic green smoothie. Um, I used to call it just a green smoothie and people thought I was going to get a blender out. So that's why I added the energetic into it. But okay. it is a, thank you. Um, and I'd love to do it right now. If you want to practice it with me, we'll, sure. we'll do it. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to close our eyes and we are going to picture. We're going to picture all the souls in our family. I'd like to do it this way. Even if there's just you and one other uh, uh, soul, 
in the family, uh, hopefully it's an animal because that or animal companion. But mm -hmm. a picture everybody in a circle around you, and um, I always think of it almost like the feeling of uh, when I went to Thanksgiving dinner at my nana and papa's, and we were, that we were all around the table at that sort of happy gathering. So it's in your mind's eye. It's just like a memory, but you think of each one that that is in the family. When you've got that picture in your mind, it's really easy because you love everybody. And I want you to picture or, or imagine or pretend, whatever word works for you, there's a beautiful green light coming out of your chest, your heart area. And it goes, it goes into the heart of whoever is on your left. I got people in a circle, and I mean animals as well as human species when I say people. So let it go into their heart. And then if there's more in the family, have that, that beautiful green light, very gorgeous. I think of spring leaves, of trees, that beautiful green. Go to the next one in the circle's heart. And it keeps going around to each heart until it comes back to you. What's really funny is sometimes people and animals in spirit will pop in to be part of the circle. Mm -hmm. You just say, yeah, there's there's always room. <laughs> Come on. So if if somebody pops in unexpected, just make room for them because you love mm -hmm. them. And now the energies, the circle, this beautiful green light, this beam is through everybody's heart area. And I'm we're using green because the, the heart chakra, the heart energy is always seen as green in what I've learned. Now, I want you to add the energy, the feeling of love, and it, and can start to the left and feel the love you have for these lovely souls and send that energy through, imbue that light with love and have it go through everybody's heart. When it comes back to you, keep it going. Like a, it's like a really slow river. It's a very gentle movement of love and light. And in your mind, you can tell them some really beautiful things. Um, I'm doing the generic version, but we can talk specifics. So things like. This is what it means to be family. We're all connected at the heart level. We love each other. We take care of each other. I'm always there for you. And then in your mind, just whatever it is that's coming through that you need to say right now or you want to say, think it to them and know that they're hearing and feeling it too. Okay. Now, as, as you're in here, um, just keep it going. I'm going to talk about different ways to use this. So you can do a one-on-one -on -one connection, like when the dog's got to be in the kennel for a longer time. 
not only do you connect with them and show the sun rises, but use that green light to connect to their heart and send love. Because I believe love is an amplifier of any communication in the physical world or in, I don't know, the spirit, at the spiritual level. And you can use that to say, hey, I'm going to be back in five sunrises. Let me show you. One sunrise, two, three, four, five. And then I'm coming back. I'm coming to get you. Walk through the door, pick you up, take you home. Yay. Whatever it is. My two dogs, it's been a lot of reminding them that they're going to be with us forever. Every day they wake up, they're going to be with us because they've had some, my two recent guys who are here in the physical. They are having a, they had a rough time, a rough start. Mm -hmm. So they need to know every day they wake up, they're going to be with this. I'll be quiet, let you say your own things to whoever you need to. Whenever you're ready, you can keep the connection going if you like. And just come on back, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That was uh that was great. It's really um I think it's a really powerful thing to do. Um it, you know, it's funny because when you said picture everybody in the circle, I already included the people that were in spirit. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm glad you gave me permission to do that. But uh um, for because to me that that connection is always there. So I know yeah. for some people they might think of only the the, the people, or, and 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 I get a lot of times people that are that are dog lovers, you know, and, and cats. We we've, we've had multiples. We've got several of them in spirit. Um, so I want to talk about um, our dogs and our cats as they get older, as they become mm -hmm. seniors, and that the struggles that we go through. Um, so, you know, there's there's taking care of them and is also making that decision sometimes to, to let them go. So how do you help people make those transitions? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi there. I'm really excited to tell you about my latest ebook. It's four lessons that you can learn from the near death experience without going through all the trouble of dying to learn them. I've been studying NDEs for several years now. I am completely convinced that not only are they 100% real, but that there's some very universal wisdom that we can get from the near-death experience. And I've distilled that down in this book into four short lessons. And I've also given you all the reasons why I believe the NDEs are absolutely real. So go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash NDE lessons to pick it up for free www.grief the number two growth.com slash NDE lessons. I hope you enjoy it. Well, um, in the taking care of them part, one of my most important realizations that I, I want to pass on to others is that when we start to see them decline, or we get that diagnosis that that clearly says there's an end in sight. Mm -hmm. Our grief starts right then. I mean, we always, I don't care how many people and, and animals, how many souls we've lost, we still have this, you know, belief that not today, <laughs> yeah. not now, not soon. And right. then it hits. So the one thing I'd ask people to do is to remember that they didn't get that diagnosis. They are not, they are not grieving like we humans are. And I haven't meant any human who loves their animal that doesn't start grieving when they hear that stuff or they mm -hmm. notice that stuff. Um, and we jump to, we jump to the end or what we're going to do and things like that. 
And uh, there's, there's a phrase, I, I'm not being a smart aleck, but I say, but I do want to wake, wake people up to say, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Come on, be here now with me. I'm not dead yet. Uh, focus back into the joy of daily, being with them daily and making their life as joyful as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, with Stella, I, I I used to sing to her. I'd say, every day with Stella is a great day. Because that's how I felt, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm getting teary because I just I just miss her. Um, but be find the joy as often as you can. I I'm not saying to shut down the other feelings, but find the joy as often as you can with their being in their presence. Um Also, look. Sometimes look to alternative therapies or just basic things. Um, good veterinary care is great. I found acupuncture to be wonderful. There's there's all kinds of things that you can use to help them stay mobile. Uh, you can even look into say, is I think vets are better at this than maybe thirty years ago, but. Are they in pain and would it help if we decrease their pain? Something just simple like that. And uh, pay attention to the basics of keeping them comfortable. Mm-hmm. And sometimes go outside to alternative therapies because a lot of those are really good. Massage, uh, hydrotherapy, things like that. If you can do it, you know, do it or learn how to do massage yourself. I was... And she was working with somebody over Zoom. And uh, I was, I, because of my background in massage therapy, I was telling her how to, to work on her dog while we were there. And she was down there. She says, oh, yeah, yeah. His, his eyes are like, oh, he loves it. I said, yeah, do that. Because um, I'm saying this because a lot of times their muscles are tight. It's not just arthritis. It's that there's tight muscles. And that makes everything worse. Hmm. And so if you can start making sure the muscles are moving around and all that, you're going to have a happier animal uh, as long as they're here. Mm-hmm. So there's that's the, the physical stuff that you can do. Um, look for what and we, we do this, but look more mindfully what brings them joy and make sure that you're doing that with them. And become the most flexible person that you can be about what they can't do anymore and how we can still figure out how we bring them joy. Um, Somebody wants to go outside, but they can't walk much. Is there something you can do so they can still walk? Are you going to get one of those, those contraptions that look like baby carriages and put them in there and take them out? What can you do to keep bringing joy into their life? physical touch is also very important most of us love being having physical touch with their animals Uh, cats make their own decisions about how much they want Mm -hmm. but generally in in these later years even if it's a soft sitting next to or whatever being being physically connected is very comforting for them okay um so anything that you want i i was going to go into i'm going to go into about um the ending part and how how i've seen it happen or and give some ideas about that but anything before that brian that that you had a question on or no, I think um, I, I love what you said about staying in the moment, because I think about when I think about animals, our dogs and cats, I believe that they live in the moment. And as you in that thing, with, like, I'm not dead yet. So we get that diagnosis and we immediately jump to the end and we're and we're sad. And they're probably looking at us going, what is going on with you? Everything's OK, you know, because they're they're still fine today. Are there are there they're focused on today? They're not focused on tomorrow. Um, so I do want to ask you, um, and this this relates to when we do get to the end, because 
I'm thinking of a really good friend right now. She's had several dogs and she's had to make a decision to to let some of them go. And she just recently did it. And she's like, I can't have any more dogs because my, you know, my heart breaks too much when I, when I have to let them go. Um, but I, I, I think, and then since we do that, we're kind of denying ourselves the joy of, of, of having the time with them. So, um, what would you say to that? Um, yeah, I, I'm, well, I'm saying that she has to honor the fact that she's not ready and, and, and the immense pain. Mm. I personally have been through that. I lost three out of five of my uh, dogs and cats a, a year ago, right about this time. Mm. Um, and But I want to say that my dog Mitsubishi, um, when he passed, and he was like my heart dog, he was the guy that was there for me when my first husband died. Um, so when he passed, I was like, why? Why did you have to go? I, I still needed you. And he said, somebody else needs you. Uh, I need to move out of the way so somebody else can come into your life. And oh, wow. that's when Tibor, who was probably came as a big dog from a dog fighting group. Wow. Yeah. So um, I would ask people to open your heart and find whatever it is that whatever there is compassion or remembering the joy of their lives mm -hmm. and how much they bring into your life and do it again. Yeah. I love, I love that. Yeah. I, I had to go so that you could make room for someone else. Yeah. Um, Cause we, we're, we're in, it's not like we can have do 10 dogs in our family. I live in a little townhouse in the suburbs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Every dog I see, I want. And and a friend of mine just recently had a dog. She's in Wisconsin. I'm in Ohio. And she's like, I have this dog. I can't keep him because my son has allergies. And I'm like, yeah, I can't, you know, we can only have so many at one time. So uh, that's a great way of looking at it. Sometimes yeah. one has to go to make room for another. And that answers a question I think kind of was going to ask you about, do animals have soul plans the way that I think, I believe humans do? Um so what what are your I thoughts on that? I do. I, I'm glad you asked that question. I, I believe that I've gone as far as to say, yes, they do. And I believe they're part of our soul families. Mm -hmm. And I believe love is eternal. And once we have that connection, uh, um, we are we are bonded. Uh, now, how I won't I, I don't know how uh, it all fits together. I have my own opinion about that. But mm -hmm. boy, they're part of our soul families. And, and I believe that they have. Uh, things that they want to accomplish in this life uh, as and things that they want to give as well as as the human species does <laughs> uh, and that they choose us and we choose them yeah i i 100 agree with that okay. so, so when it comes to that that decision of of having to make a decision to let our animal go and i i say it's a privilege that we can do that um because we can't you know I don't know how your people's thoughts are, but with humans, we don't get to make that choice. With animals, we do. Um, but then there's always there's an inev inevitable guilt. Did I do it too soon? Did I wait too late? And people will usually fall one side or the other, but they're going to beat themselves up either way. So what do what do you, what do the animals have to tell us about that? Uh, this is the best thing that I've learned, and I I hope everybody who's listening take this to heart. Um. In the the animals that I've connected with in the afterlife, they don't hold grudges. <laughs> so they're not saying, you did this. Um, what it what they have they have communicated through various ways is that what they bring with them is our love. That's what carries over into the afterlife. And the other thing that I want to say is when our when they come into our lives, I believe that they give us their medical power of attorney. They say, "You okay? I I get it. Uh, you're going to take care of me," and and it is at a soul level. It's not like the, the dog says, "Let me sign this thing." I know I'm not. Yeah. It's not mm. there. But there's a soul level where they agree that we we will be their guardians, and so. Letting them go is not, it is not required to be perfect. 
it, it is not a requirement that we have to be perfect people in this area. And I don't even think that is possible. But if we do it with love and compassion, it, it's that's what they bring. That's what they bring into their afterlife. And they get the other stuff starts to just fade away. Um, the difficulties and whatever they had going on in the physical world, it, 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 it generally gets cleared out. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that I really want to say that I would think it's so important for people to hear. And, and then to also, I also want to point out that what I've realized is this stuff of too, too late, held them too long, did it too soon. It's a barrier to feeling the full grief of their loss. It's a human way of coping. Uh, and I get it because once you pull that away, it's like, no, nah, they're gone. Yeah. That's it. They, physically, I'm not going to be touching them or looking into their eyes. And that's that part of our connection is finished. And that's a hard place to get to. Yeah, that was that was very well said. Um, as as someone who works with people in grief, and we're usually talking about people, but we also grieve our animals. Um, that guilt is a is a very common thing, and it is a barrier to healing. And I and frankly, until you just said that, I really never thought of it that way. It's kind of a way of distracting ourselves. It is. The way of not instead of dealing with the grief, I'm going to deal with the guilt, and and I and so you you beat yourself up over it. Um, to to avoid dealing with the fact that you know that they are physically gone from us. They are physically gone from us. Yeah, and uh, it took me a while to figure that one out because it was so. I mean, just all of us have it. Mm -hmm. and said, oh yeah, that's part of it. It's just we're not quite ready to move into the reality, this new reality that we. Have. Yeah, and and I, I've had to make that decision twice, and you know, you're and you know. My dog, the the last one I had to make the decision for it was about four years ago, I think it was. And she hadn't been able to walk for a couple of days. She was having seizures. She'd spent a whole day like in her in her room. We have a, a mud room where you, you know, she would stay. And I'm like, she's not having any quality of life. She's not be able to get out. I, I already taken her to the vet and they said, it's going to be a while, but it's not today. One of those types of things. So we take her to the vet. And they throw a treat on the floor. I'm like, she's not going to eat it because she hasn't eaten anything like in two or three days. And she jumped up and ate the treat. <laughs> right as we're about to to put her down. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, but so that, you know, I started thinking, well, maybe she could have had a little bit more time. You know, those thoughts go through your head. Oh, and it's so funny that you say that because I think um, oh, this is just a, my theory. I, I saw when I went home to to say goodbye to my dad. He had been close to a coma and uh, had all the family here. And my kids were like uh, two and four at the time. And he perked up. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't eating. He had stomach cancer. But he grabbed my son a treat that my son had. And he ate it just to, <laughs> just to be a smart ass. <laughs> and then he, and like two days later, he was gone. But mm -hmm. it was like a, a just on a final like, uh, okay, it's almost over. And I'm going to, I'm just going to do it yeah i can't you yeah. know uh i feel like that happens sometimes that that final splurge of, and I, I think part, partly sometimes it's relief it's like i know it's i, I know um it, it, i've got a better outcome that there's mm -hmm. something good on the other side and this body is 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 not it's no fun anymore and uh i'm okay yeah and I think it's really important, I, and I love this conversation, and I'm glad we went to this point, but because it's not the end. We, we we think of, like, when we're making the decision for our animal, we think of it as, I think of it as we're releasing them. You know, we're getting to the point where our, our bodies are designed to fail. They, they all do. They, inevitably, they all do. And when we do get cats and dogs, we know that theirs typically fail sooner than our do, ours do. So it's time to to free them from that 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 body that no longer functions the way that that they needed to 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 have the joy that they could have i think it's so that's so true um and 
I, I they also get to that point too. I was uh, talking to a cat. We, we do check-ins every month um, who's got neurological problems. And the, the way that it came through for this cat was that uh, if you have the analogy of the body is a car, she tried try to shift, wouldn't go, turn the steering wheel to the right, and the car would go to the left. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm, and, and, and then couldn't even get out, like started to feel trapped mm -hmm. in her own body. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we, we kind of know that, that the fun stuff is, there's not much left yeah. anymore. Yeah. There's a question I wanted to ask you, and it, it's, Maybe outside your area of expertise, but you know, I had someone asked me just the other day. Um, you know, people that are very sensitive will say that why do animals come to Earth to suffer? Um, you know, like well, especially like food animals, for example. Yeah. Um, have you ever gotten any insight into that? Like, you know, being a cow or being a, a chicken. Huh. Well, you know. Everything we we feel or know always um, changes, but at this point, I'm not. So this is on a bigger level, not on the. If you ask me if I was a cow, I'd say no. I was. I, I'm going to choose this at a cow level. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a life that I want. However. I wonder if there's some goodness, a big enough goodness in their souls that says, um, we'd like to give you the chance to relook at how how you are treating another species in this world. Hmm. Uh, we're willing to, I, I don't know. That's what's coming through is, Humans, uh, we'd like you to learn to have compassion for all of us. And um, I wonder if that's possible. That's just a wondering. Is it yeah. at a, a very high level? They're, uh, they're like, we'll wake up. Yeah. Well, I kind of threw that at you out of the blue. So I appreciate you uh, playing along and answering that. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out for me but that's what i was i was wonder if that's that's possible for for them to choose to so the the um last question i want to ask you is about um reincarnation and yeah. you know there's there's some debate about whether people animals have been people or could be people or people could come back as animals have you had any insight into that um i i have I felt that um, there might be some ability to choose to not be a human and to come back as an animal. I don't believe that it's punishment like some of the stuff I've read about. Right. Uh, I think it's a choice. Um, I met a, a horse that really loved this woman uh, uh, and was a, as a guy and um, he was, he felt very human to me in his relationship because he said, if he's, he explained that if he was a man, he would fight her husband for her. <laughs> and I thought, that's a very human thought and yeah. I, I'm not into anthropomorphism but that is what came through for me um and I and I also found a really interesting story about a uh a, a, a kid who had a memory of being a snake in a village and he had many of the, the uh knew the story of the man in the village who had killed the snake and it just felt True to me, it's a very fascinating story. So I'm kind of open to it. I mean, like, I don't know that the rules are as as stringent as some people have said. I think there's yeah, I, 
we always want to apply rules to everything. And I've heard people, some people want to say, well, animals, well, it's interesting. Some people say animals don't have souls, which to me is just, that's not even debatable. Right. They clearly do. Um, and then some people say, well, their, their souls are different. And, you know, so humans could never be an animal, but why not? Why, why couldn't I want to experience what it's like to be a dog or a cat? It's, it's, it's just, as you said, different vehicle to drive for my soul. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've met people who say that they're sure that their cat is their grandfather or their grandmother. And I'm like, I don't I don't know that you're wrong. I don't know. You know, you, you knew him. Yeah, I think it's certainly possible. Yeah. Well, Mary Beth, we're um coming to the end of our time. I really appreciate you you doing this with me today. Um, let people know like what services you offer, because I know you do work with people one on one, people and animals, um, and how people can find you. Okay, thank you, Brian. This has been great. Um, so you can find me, the best way to find me is go to my website, sacredgrove.com, S-A-C-R-E-D-G-R-O-V-E.com. Mm -hmm. um, I work with people and their pets, people and their animals um, to uh, to help with behavior. That's funny. Behavior, emotional, physical stuff, end of life. I do most of it over Zoom, uh, some phone calls, and I do it uh, if you can speak English and you can do it in some time zone that agrees with you. Uh, we can work together, uh, and we look. We can do both an animal communication, getting a little bit into the bodies of what's going on there, mm -hmm. and energy healing. So it's and sometimes it's for the person as well as the animal. I, I also teach. You connect, and uh, that's twice a year. And I've created something called Family Animal Communicators Community for folks who want to try learning it themselves with my pre-recorded sessions and doing some practice. So awesome. that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Awesome. So we can find all that on uh, sacredgrove.com. Yes, um, yeah, I think what you're—I I know what you're offering is is very valuable. Um, and I, and I love I loved our conversation today. Um, as I said, I've had dogs for a long time, and I've always felt like I can communicate with them. And I don't understand people that really don't get it. So I appreciate the the practical tips you've given us today, and people being open. Because as you said, I know our dogs are they're 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 sending us stuff, they're receiving stuff. You know, th there have been studies like like dogs know when their when their owners are coming home, like. My dog will come. I'm out walking every morning and five minutes before I come home, she'll go to the window. And I, again, I'm like, how does she know that she can't hear me? She probably can't smell me for, you know, it's she, there's a connection. I saw the same thing with my cat because my husband will take the dogs out. And um, I'd always noticed that Shadow was sitting on the rug when the dogs came in. But then I noticed before they were even close, she got on the rug facing the door, waiting mm -hmm. for them to come back. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think your your cat knows that it's the end of our interview because she just got up and left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. She's like, okay. Well, it's been it's been great uh, having this conversation with you today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the podcast, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. What questions came up for you? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? I invite you to visit us at grief to growth .circle .so. That's grief the number two growth .circle .so, to continue the conversation with me and with other listeners. It's a space to sound off, to share reactions, and to go deeper into the topics from the show. I look forward to chatting more, and I hope to see you there.